this bread baker, it's not working right. So we're gonna open it up, stay with me. The problem we have with the bread maker is that when it starts to do its kneading, which the little paddle inside starts turning around and uh, actually kneads the dough. It gets bogged down and the motor doesn't stall. The motor just, well, the gear stalls. The motor keeps turning and all you're hearing is the banging, bang, bang, bang. It sounds like a slipping belt if there was a belt on it. So uh, take the basket out. Everything there works fine. I go inside and I turn the paddle. The paddle's got lots, it, it works nice. So this gear, or these two paddles here, they get, they get turned by the motor inside that has the reciprocating paddles right in here. So this turns, which turns the paddle. So let's see how it looks inside. It looks like we can gain access from it, mostly at the bottom. So we're going to take off all these screws here and see what we can find. Pops off really easy. Just what I was thinking. It's a cog belt. So let's have a better, let's have a closer look at this now. This is the motor. The motor, when it turns, it drives this cog belt. When it's jamming up in there, it's slipping. And let's figure out why it's slipping. Okay, we're gonna try and uh, take that belt off. When you have a really good look at it, the cogs all still seem to be in pretty good shape. Now there's a number here, and we're going to write that number down because if we have to get a new belt, that's the number of the belt that we need to get. But this belt, when it's on here, I guess we really have to uh, give it a whirl and see what happens. I think what's happened is that the belt is just stretched out too much because that seems like a considerable amount of play. So the new belt might be might be in order. Let's plug this in and see what we're going to get if we can actually set it to turn the knee all on its own. So if I hold this, I can see the belt slipping. So the belt is really worn out, and that's what the issue is going to be. If I could put a tensioner on it, right here, that would do the trick. But there's really no solid place for me to mount it mount one on here and uh, I don't see the point of doing that for the effort that it's going to take. So that was pretty quick. So we're going to take this here number that's right here on the belt and we're going to order that belt. So we went online and we had a look at this uh, belt. I actually just punched in the number. And it came up with a, well, a punch in the number. I, the number on this one was a HTD564, and it's a timing belt or a synchronous belt. And it's got the, the, the cogs in it. The 3M is telling you what pitch is in between each of these little cogs. Uh, the 564 is the overall length. So when I measured this overall length or the uh, circumference, I came up with 571 millimeters and it should be 564 millimeters which tells me that this is stretched seven millimeters um, technically if this stretches less than the pitch is acceptable once it stretches past the pitch which is three millimeters if it has more than three millimeters of stretch it will skip over so I uh, found a supplier of the belt He's in Illinois, and I'm in here in Canada, and uh, it's, the belt is a few three bucks, three fifty or whatever the heck it is, and fifteen bucks in shipping. Send it to me. 
Um, and when the belt comes in, we'll put it on. Good, be making bread in no time. <laughs>